another groovy Tuesday. How are we all doing today? Do we have anybody there? Can you hear me? Oh, Jilly will be in the room with you today. So if you have any questions, um, hopefully we can get some people coming in. The screen seems to have changed. I know Bob mentioned it yesterday um, during the Shack Shack. So hopefully we can see some people coming in. Yes, I can see some numbers trotting up on the side there. There we go. And a text message. Sound is good from Jilly. Thank you, Jilly. So how we all take, there we go. We've got the lovely Hilda, Catherine, Karen. Good morning, good morning. Oh, groovy cheesy again. They come around so quick. Madness, absolutely madness. So how are we all doing? We all doing okay? Give you a chance to sort of settle in. I've got my coffee from Jilly. Thank you, Jilly. Oh, I've got lots to talk about today. We really have. I've got my, my list to one side, which I'll go through and tick. Good morning, Julia, Lorraine. Oh, lovely. So many lovely friends. Oh, and there's a the lovely Josie. Super duper. So, should we, should we introduce the lady herself? This is what you're all waiting for. The lovely, well, I'm going to bring the lovely Linda Williams into the room to join us. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Are you okay? Well, I, I'm going to ask the usual question, Linda. What's the weather like in Wales? <laughs> 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 Mind, if there's any any noise, background noise, they're, they're working on the garden next door and they're, they're digging it all up like our own, not this morning, please. But oh. uh, no, it's been raining this morning, so we couldn't get out for a walk. But uh, I think the sun is starting to peep through, so yeah. Yeah, we've, we've, it's been very mixed down here in Kent. Um, we, we had sort of some rain this morning, then the sun came out and then the rain's come back. Totally yeah. crazy weather, isn't it? Strange, so. it's really strange, but, yes. And we nearly didn't so, make it this morning, did we? We, yeah. had, we had the connection at um, one minute to ten, so to say. Uh, <laughs> technology, technology's great when it works, isn't oh, it, Oh, when it works, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so the walks that you and Rob do every day, uh, how far do you walk? Um, we walk about two to three miles every morning. So we go down, we go, we get in the car. We've got some lovely walks up in the woods behind us, but it's quite a trek up there. So um, we go down to Aberavon Seafront and we start from one end and walk all the way along and then all the way back. It's lovely because every morning it's different. You see the tides changing, the waves have got different patterns and they leave different patterns in the sand. It's different every day. So it's really nice. Uh, wow. Yeah. Very nice. Lucky to be so close to the beach. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Uh, 20 minutes in the car, roughly 20 minutes. So, yeah. yeah. Very yeah. nice. Very, very so, nice. Yeah. We've got a stream outside the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got one to the bottom of the garden. So. <laughs> I mean, that's the closest I'll get to any water this year. <laughs> uh, apart from the, a bath and a shower, obviously, but yeah. yeah so, but okay. so, Linda, what are we up to today? We're going to emboss a dragonfly today. We're going to use the other plate because we did the butterfly last week, and yeah. um, we're going to emboss the dragonfly. Um, and we're going to employ some different tactics with different embossing in different directions. So, just Ooh. to show what you can do to make it different, you know? So, yes, that's what Lovely. And we can do this with the butterfly as well. It's just a, it's often just a different wing. Yes, different wings and leaving out different parts. Because you, you uh, if you just emboss the, the outline of the butterfly or the dragonfly, then you can do whatever you want inside. Can't you put needle tools in there as well if you want to? Yeah, oh, lovely. Yes, yeah. 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 Talking of needle schools, we've got the lovely Pergamano Summer School coming up very soon, yeah. haven't we? Oh, we're looking forward to that. Yes. I, yeah. So is everybody at home looking forward to I that as so. well? I think so. And the number of people that have, have messaged me and say, oh, I've bought the book and uh, I bought all the tools. And it's one of those things that just hasn't come out of the cupboard, you know, which is such a mm. shame um, because there's such a wealth of things you can do with the needle tools. Exactly. And for people that are just joining us that maybe wasn't with us last week, 
basically the Pergamano Summer School is going to launch on the 20th of July at 10 o'clock and Linda is going to guide us through her first book that she wrote whilst working the collaboration with Clarity and it's Linda's Handbook for multi noodle Tools Volume 1 and this is sort of like a pure encyclopedia isn't it Linda of different yes. techniques that you can do and these are with sort of like the essential the basic tools that's right isn't it? That's right, yes. The, the volume one is, is the, the, are the smaller um, denominations of needle tools and then volume two are the larger ones. Um, they're, all, they're all just as easy to use. It's just, you just need the know-how and just to be, sometimes visual is better than actually reading, isn't it, sometimes? So, Absolutely. Um, these, um, the summer school will go hand in hand with the multi-needle toolbox and the packs. So some people will already have some of the tools, you know, and um, some people will have the old blue tools. So somebody asked a question the other day, would the old blue tools fit? And yes, they certainly will. There, there's sometimes a variation in size and there always is. It's just like a batch, isn't it? You never get one That's batch. Right. You buy wool, maybe you'll have a batch of wool and the colour is slightly different. Um, some are slightly different to others. Um, in the size or the positioning, but most of them, they all will fit on these patterns, you know, and we can make them fit anyway if it's if it's slightly outdoor, you know, so. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think Jilly will pop the link up. If you want to know more about what the Pergamano's, uh, the Summer Pergamano School is, then Jilly's put some links up and you can find out all the information on our website. But what we've also done, we've created this tick list, which you can download. And what we've done, we've split it into three different pages. So we've got Multi-Needle Handbook Volume 1, and then we've got all the tools that you're going to need. And Linda's going to work through. We're starting off with the four needle tool first, aren't we, Linda? I can't quite make my mind up. I think it'll either be, I don't know whether to work through the through the book and start with the three or maybe the four. I'll, I'll see. I'll, I'll decide when we, um, I'll decide when we can just, you know. Just, <laughs> yeah. Let's start with the three then. Let's start with the we'll three. We'll start with the three. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you see, you've got a little tick list here. And then if you want to take advantage at the same time, we've got Multi-Needle Volume 2 as well available. And we've got both books as a, a super price on the website. And again, this is the tools that Linda was talking about where there's more needles in these various tools here. So, for example, sort of like, I mean, the Pico Vs was a collaboration between yourself and Barbara, wasn't it? How That's that came right. about. That was a brand new tool. Yeah, we both said we were using the angle tool, and um, there was a there's a, a a point a needle at the top of the angle tool, and when you cut it out, it created a turret, really pretty in its own right. But I wanted something with a with a point on the top, and so did Barbara. And we came together, and we we both seemed to think about it at the same time, you know. So um, there isn't a needle at the end of the pico V's now, so that when you snip, you've got you've got a lovely pico point on the end of the of the um of the v then so you've Perfect. got a proper tip to it so yeah excellent and then on the last page we've got a list of sort of essential accessories as well so this is available on our website jilly's popped the link up for you so you can download this and you can go through and tick and work out so that we're all ready for the pergamano summer school on the that's 20th so of handy, july isn't it? That's really, really handy. And if people didn't want to buy all the tools, then yes, we're going to work our way down. I wouldn't just pick tools out of the, out of the air and say, oh, we're going to do this. So we, we'll work our way through the book systematically. Yeah. Perfect. Sounds like a fantastic school curriculum. And so. also, I've been talking to Glynis this morning. Glynis Whitehead was on our design team. So yeah. um, we're going to, um, Glynis is going to create a project using that specific needle tool, a little mini right. project, and then it's going to go on the Clarity Matters blog at the end of that week. So we're going to oh, coordinate wow. it. So Glynis and I, and Lynn Jackson as well, will be working closely together to get things out to you. And then maybe later on down the line, um, the three of us can collaborate and start throwing needle tools together to make Ooh. different patterns again, you know? So, um, yeah, wow. I, it's quite, it's qu it'll be quite interesting, I hope. 
so exciting. And you know what I love about this the, as well, Linda? You're giving up your time for free for an hour every week on Facebook Live and our YouTube channel so that people can sort of stay home, they can craft, and they can get tuition from the best, one of the best in the world, a Pergamano master tutor. It's just crazy. Well, I'm just hoping they will enjoy it. I'm, will they enjoy it? I know, <laughs> I know Barb mentioned yesterday that she's going to join in as well and sort yes. of fast along. Yeah. Um, so, yes. uh, so no pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she'll be full of questions, I'm sure. <laughs> and that's what I'll be here for. So I'll be in the room with you as well. So people can ask questions and then I can relay them to you. Because obviously, you, you. perforating, you can't read the screen at the same time, can you? Yeah, so. that's what we want. We want people to ask questions. And if you didn't quite catch it, can you just say, well, can you repeat that, please? Can you show it again? And I will, you know, or, or if there was something last week that you didn't quite get, let us know so that we can show it to you again, you know? Absolutely. Any questions, any questions, we're open to, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll have to get a little emoji made for putting a hand up yeah. <laughs> for asking in the classroom. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. Right. Okay, then, Linda, I think what we'll do then, I'm going to swap over my camera and I'm going to hand the floor over to yourself so we can get okay. started. Okay, I'll swap mine as oh. well. So, there we go. right, let's have a look here. We're going to be using the dragonfly clay today. So, I've put that into my clay to make. You're going to be crafting along, Paul? I am. I'm going to try. I'm going to yes. try and keep up. So what we're going to do today, let me bring this in to show you. So can you see this dragonfly here? I've done in, I've, I've embossed them differently for you to see. So with number one, I've just done some straight embossing right down the wing. And then on this one, I've embossed that way. Yeah. Oh yeah. And on yeah. this one, the reason I did that was because I wanted you to see what it would look like when the embossing was straight rather than curved you get a much more natural look if you curve it it looks like two completely different wings it does doesn't it and this one we we go in in all sorts of different directions can you see wow. it yeah so i thought maybe do you think this would be the best way to go today paul this one i'm being i'm being led by you linda okay. well <laughs> if we do this one today then it to do these would be easy. <laughs> so if okay, you can start, start with this one. And I mean, yeah. you know, if you make a mess, so it is only a piece of parchment, isn't it? Now, Absolutely. on this one, two, three plate, we've got an incomplete dragonfly, haven't we? So we have, the first yeah. thing I thought I'd show you how to do was to make a complete dragonfly. Oh, some, right, okay. Some images, you can do that, you know? So... And we can do this with the butterfly as well, I presume. Oh, yes, yes. So if you look, I don't know if you can see that. I, I was having a little go earlier on, just a little practice. So I've made him complete there. And what I've done is I've, I've, I've used a white pencil to draw him in. And because we're right. doing the shadow embossing, we don't really need any harsh outlines anyway. If you wanted to do this and have... Um, a hard white outline and you're just colouring, then you could yeah. um, you could trace it with a white pencil and then just turn it over and emboss it in on the back with your oh, with right. the fine embossing tool. And I've extended his tail because they're quite long, a dragonfly tail. So all I'm using on this is, is that part of the wing, that line and that line. So we'll do it together now for you to see, but I'm not okay. putting... I'm not putting all these all these lines in. Okay? Right, okay. So let's let's attach our parchment. Rub it over with a tumble dryer sheet. And I'm going to use a number two groovy tool very lightly. Let's have a look. Okay. So number two. Okay, yeah. I'm going to put in, so I'm just running over the edge into the groove and very, very lightly because I don't want that 
hard white outline for this shadow embossing. So I'll put some of his tail, put more dots in his tail later on. Okay. We're not embossing the circle. We, perhaps we could put him then into a square or a larger circle later on. So the next, when you've done his body, his antenna and those little dots, the next thing we're going to do is just the shape of the wing. So just along the outside. See, I, this is where I have to slow down because I'm using the larger ball tool. I keep jumping out. Jumping out. Yes, yeah. There is an option to use the number one tool very, right. very lightly. Now, um, you need to try this at some point. So I'll, I'll use the number one tool, but I'm not pushing it into the, into the groove. I'm just skating over it. So that, in effect, gives you a really, really fine line very similar to the line you would get from a fine white pencil, which is what traditional parchers would use. So I've just gone round the outside there, okay? Yeah. You with me? Now then, we're going to put some of the lines in. So see that line there, that long one? Yeah. Just check, yes. I'm going to put that in. Okay. I'll do it with the number two now, so I'm still on the number one. And I'm going to put this one in. Not see that V there. Yeah. Leave that out. Okay. So I'm going to put this one in. This one here. With me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then on the bottom part, I'm only going to do this one. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter if you put the wrong ones in. You just you just adapt and you emboss where you know where you want to so on this side i'm just going to emboss those two lines on the outside of the wing okay yeah right now then if you take your parchment off your plate and turn it over to the right side yeah now i've got those bits of the other wing that I need to line up. It doesn't matter if his body doesn't line up. Let's line up those bits. His body is slightly out. He's on the skew with. Oh, I see, yes. He's flying round a corner. <laughs> <laughs> right, so my first boo-boo was that when I put my parchment on, I automatically, let me just show you, um, I automatically, when I'm lining up my parchment, let me just go, there we go. I automatically sort of lined up with the edge. So now when I turn over, I haven't got enough space. But you know what? This yeah. is my practice piece. Okay. So I'm gonna carry on, I'm gonna carry on and redo well, that. We, you could yes. Well you could just do you could just practice on that edge one anyway, if somebody else has done that, not to worry. So all we do now is with a white pencil, carefully tracing. The rest of his wing, the out, the outlines first. Yeah. And then that one in the middle that we put in there on the top wing. And then that one there. So just a mirror image. You're creating a mirror image. And then that one there. There we are. Now then, if I was to take this off now, move my groovy plate out of the way, you can see that he's complete. Yes. Okay, and I mean you can take your um, you can take your pencil and or you can use the dots on the groovy plate. So we'll add in a few more dots and actually get a bit smaller for his his body. So you've got a lovely complete dragonfly there. Yeah. Yeah, I've caught up with you. Good. Good. Now then. Okay, let's take my groovy tabs off and we'll start to emboss. Okay. So back on the back. Now to make sure you turn it over on the back. And I'm going to use my pink embossing. So this is the one that we're doing. Right, okay. okay. Would it help if I take it out and turn it round so that you can see it from the back? Not probably. That might be a good idea, yeah. There we are. 
Perfect. Do that side. That's the one that we're going to be doing. So, number six ball tool. You best mate. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to give the um, the body a one nice coat of very pale embossing. So this is similar to what we've done in the past, isn't it? With that sort of very light. And very then, light. Is that, and is the whole body being shadow yes. work or is it the yeah. whole body? I'm giving the whole body a coat and I'm going to add a little bit of shading into the body afterwards. I bring this a bit closer for you to see. You don't have to put any shading on the body, but can you see how I've shaded the body there? Yes. But yes, I give so it a coat first so that I've got a base coat on. Okay? Right. Yep. And the dots, I mean, the six millimeters is a bit too big for that. So if you take your, I do your three millimeter if you've got it, or your number four embossing tool. So remember now a dot is up and down, back and forth, and round and round. So we're going to do those gently as well. So it's up and down. Back and forth, round and round. I'm going to have to try and um, get my magnifier on the table somewhere when we start doing the needle tool school, or I'll be all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure it doesn't get in the in the way of the the camera. Right. So back to the six millimeter ball tool. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to. I'll do that bit first. So working from the outside edge in, and you can see where the tool goes down, that's the white disc, and it gradually fades. Okay, much like when we okay. did when we do petals and things. So I'm gonna make sure that the tool lands on the, the, the embossed line. So so to make sure the tool lands on the embossed line, the tool looks as if it's on the outside of the line, really. Yeah. If I can demonstrate that. So to emboss that, my tool would probably start there. Right. If okay. I started there, I'd have a, a shadow in between my embossing. Because the, the tool is round, the part of the tool that hits the embossing is in the centre of the tool. Right, okay. okay. Yeah. And are you starting from that straight line and I'm working starting away? from a straight line, yeah. Yeah, I'm starting from a straight line. And then I'm going to, as, I'm, as I move over, I'm starting to curve a little bit. Tonight. So we've had a question from Thelma. Is yeah. there any particular type of magnifying glass that you use, Linda? Yes. Um, when I want to do my best work, I, on my work desk, I've got a, um, a daylight magnifier with all the little LEDs around the outside edge underneath right, okay. the magnifier. Um, that's, I've had that for about two or three years now, and that's the best one I've ever, ever had. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but um, it's brilliant. If you've already got a lamp on your desk, then one of the a daylight magnifier about that size, that size, um, the magnifier yeah. alone, they are good as well. So I've tried all all the different types. I've also, when I'm working on on my lap, on a tray uh, in the evening, I've got one of these head things that go <laughs> <laughs> like a mine. So <laughs> I've got one of those as well. So right, I'm going to do okay. this next bit now. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap. Can you see that gap there? Tiny little Very gap. faintly, yeah. I'll, I'll fill it in. Now. And then as I'm coming round, I need to follow that line there. Okay? So as I'm coming yeah. round, I'm curving it. So it, in essence, where each stroke ends is, is roughly in that point there. So as you right, move okay. along, I'll draw that on a piece of paper now for you to see. So 
You can see that now, can't you? Yes? Yeah. So here we have, if I can, so we've got the butterfly. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> there's <laughs> one line. And there's you need the a gravy line. plate, Linda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's created the V that's there. So are you um, able to push it up a little bit further yeah. off the screen? Lovely, yeah, thank you. So I've started, I've I've done all this embossing here and I've gone down as far as I possibly can. Yeah. Okay. And then when I've done started this embossing, I've left a little gap. So that will go to there. And then as I'm coming round, I'm going towards that point there. So, yeah. so that's the way so that to create that V shape. Okay? Yep, perfect. Great drawing, isn't it? Great illustration. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's clear because we can see exactly where you're doing, especially with the, the black and the white, it, yes. it, it really does highlight yeah. the, the yeah. right direction. And with this part then, we're going to be use, um, leaving, it doesn't matter how many gaps you leave, it's up to you how many you can get in there. Um, if you think that you can't, cope with that small area with the six millimeter and leave the gaps as well, change down to your 4.5 millimeter. I'm gonna try it with a six millimeter. So I'm gonna leave another little gap. And this time I'm, I'm going in the direction, I'm going that way. I'm still creating a curve, but all yeah. the rocks are gonna end further and further down that line, that line there. Okay. And are we are we going up to meet the line or are we staying away from that line? No, yes, you can work to meet the line with this with these fine strokes, but later on when we when we add more white we'll be doing less and less and less. Okay? Right. Perfect. So I'm gap and I'm gonna keep nice. Your curves might be might curve more than mine. It doesn't matter. This is a practice piece anyway, isn't it? So yeah. So you can see now I'm going down the line. Make sure that ball tool lands on the on the, the edge of the wing. There we are. Close up my gaps a bit. You can close up like like I said last week. You can close up your gaps a little bit later on. So so don't worry about that. And as you get better at this. You 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 know you 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 know you know exactly where you should your ball tool should be landing how far you should take it and um, you know it it does it does fall into place so with this part I've got a little gap there I decide yeah. I do a little stripe and a little gap and then fill it in to the line. And we're following the curve again, aren't we? On following that. the curve, yes. And then, to, to give you more interest, I decided that I was going to do this in a different direction. So if I turn that around. So these are more or less following that line there. So we're going to meet that other line. And we're going to leave a little gap. Still curving rather than straight, a little bit of a curve to it, if you can. Then. Okay, I've only managed to get four in there, but four little stripes, but there we are. I'll bring it a bit closer for you to see. So that's a good yeah. start, yes, yeah, a good it's a good base. So if I turn it round, you can see how how pale it should be. Now, this is probably I would have done it a bit lighter than this normally, but you wouldn't be able to see it. So I would say this would be about two quarts maybe. Right, okay. okay. Right. So shall I just complete the one wing and then you can or shall I do it all? What do you think, Paul? How are we off for time? Um, how we've done half past already, Linda. Yeah, because I want um, to show you the bubbles as well. 
So okay, shall we so just, should we just concentrate on one wing? Yeah, because yeah. then people can do the other wing for homework, can't they? Yes. All they our lovely people watching. Yeah, okay. Right, so so back in with a six millimeter ball tool, okay? So we're gonna give this yeah. another coat. If you can't get that sweep right down there, down into that, just give it a little sweep upwards, just to give it a, one little coat, and that's enough. I wouldn't go and do any more in there now. Okay, so. Okay. So we've done that bit, and then we're going to get that V in there. Some long strokes, remember now, some long, some short. I mean, I must admit, Linda, I mean, if I was doing this for the first time, from what I've learned over the past couple of weeks with doing this, um, the shading type of white work, I would have had to have drawn the lines in with a pencil. You know how we first started off? Yes. To know exactly where to pop those gaps in you could yes you could but i feel confident now because i you've been showing us yes. so i didn't even think about popping a pencil line on for those extra lines the thing is i mean um somebody else's lines could be in a different place it doesn't it doesn't really matter where your lines are does it someone's gonna not gonna say not gonna come along and look at your dragonfly and say you should have had an extra line in there <laughs> you know <laughs> you mean the line mind. police the line police aren't watching then are they Linda no <laughs> well, I don't know they might could have the odd one sneaking in and watching <laughs> you know who you are <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do a zigzag line just to yes yeah uh. so are you following now I'm, I'm going over it all yeah and I'm probably doing the same amount now as I did the last time, but I'm going to start reducing in a minute the length of my lines. So let's give his body. Um, I'm going to do, let's get a smaller tool, um, the, the head part. I'm going to give him another coat. I want that to be all right. So what have I got here? I've got um, a 4.5. And then, um, right, let's, if you can, let's see if you can introduce a little bit of shading here. Um, so with the 4.5, we're going to do the same thing. And if you can't do this, don't worry about it. So it's a little press and a flick. So I'm pressing and I'm flicking in that, that way. So I'm, I'm, I'm causing a little bit of a, um, a curve. Okay. Okay. And you're doing that with the 4.5? Yeah, 4.5. You can see it's starting to colour on one side there now. So let's give these little, um, the little dots another coat. So I think I'll go in with the, I'm going in with the 1.5 for those now. They've, they've had a little coat, so they will be okay. So it's up and down, round and round. So these won't need to be done again. When you're doing small areas, mm. you need make, sometimes you don't need more than one coat. So if you're doing small dots, you don't have to do them more, more than once. But when you're doing the large areas, you've got to do that gradually. So I'm going to go in. I probably would give that maybe another coat with a six millimeter. So I'm going to go in now with a four point five. Okay. There it is. There. I just want you to be able to see that there. Let's turn him that way so he's in the same direction. There we are. So four point five now. So same thing. Keep your strokes very close together. Some long, some short. And you can see the difference now. It's starting to get much more white. And then I'm keeping this V nice and smooth. I'm, I'm not putting any gaps in that. So where the tool goes down, I'm still aiming for that point in that V and I'm curving around. Okay. 
And then I'm going to do all those little stripey bits. So I'm not going to go all the way to the line this time. I'm going to introduce. Okay. You can go all the way to the line in the odd place, but not, not everywhere. So do it, you know, like I say, some long, some short. So some will maybe reach the line and some won't. And then on this part. So I'm going to go almost up to the top with that one uh, on the end there. See that bit there? And then turn yeah. it around. So you notice I'm turning my parchment to do my embossing and I'm flicking away from me. Some people would prefer to flick towards themselves. It's, it's a matter of preference. When I'm using the shader tools, I pull towards myself. And when I'm using the ball tools, I flick away from me. I All right. Yeah. There we are. So it's starting to. There we are starting nice. to take me now. I'll show you what I've done, Roger. Yes. Yeah. Ah, uh, what am I going to do? Let me swap the cameras to. Hey, on. There we go. Oh, see, well done. Yeah, that's different, isn't it? Uh, yeah, different. Yeah. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a bit of a gap on the top of your wing there. You haven't gone right to the edge. This one here? Yeah. Yeah. At the top Did of the wing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The and also, yeah. they're a little bit too wide as well, aren't oh, they, those matter. gaps? It doesn't matter, does it? It's lovely. But, well done. Yeah. Yeah, good. Right, so let's get the uh, let's get the three millimeter or the number four ball tool. I'll use the number four for people that haven't got the three. Um, okay. I'm going to make that his head a little bit wetter, and then I'm going to introduce more shading again here with the number four. You can introduce a little gap here and there if you want. them curved yeah no wow wow <laughs> okay how quickly that's come together i know i know but leave you know do leave um do leave some time in between your i mean if you want a quick card then by all means but you will get better in bossing if you do leave some time in between. So with we'll take the number number four tool or the three millimeter and we'll make some more white work. We'll enhance that white work a bit more. And you are you just doing the tips on this part, Linda? Just I'm not going so far with the smaller tool. Yeah. And if you find that you think, oh, I didn't introduce enough shading in that, you can still do it. I did say you could go back and introduce a little bit more. And what will happen is your shading won't be quite as dark. So you can see your shading isn't quite as dark as the gaps that oh, you have. Oh, yeah. Let's get that. Yeah. Come on, focus. Well, Technology. Technology. <laughs> oh, there we are. There oh, we go. You can see. So. Wow. That's a paler grey. It's it's more white, a white grey then. So it's all these different shades are what you should be introducing into your work to get that really nice um, shaded natural embossed look. Wow. Okay. And if I were, if I, if I decided I, that I wanted to, I could go in even further with a smaller tool. And I'm doing doing even less now. Okay. And, and because you're using a smaller ball tool, do you have to put less pressure on because of going through or? 
Um, I'm, I'm probably using the same amount of pressure because it's already embossed. Um, yeah, if this one's all right, the, the 1.5. If you were going to the, the 1 and the 0 0.5, then definitely yes. But this one is more rounded and it, it's, it's not so... It's not so severe. So right. I might show you this now. So I'm introducing more shading again now. It's not what I've done on my original, but you can see. I mean, you could give this dragonfly to 10 different people and they could look so different. Mm. So this now is the... Is the one point five moving at the bottom? Wow! So see, you can see now all those different shades that you've got in there. Yeah. You've got the the grey, the grey white, the white, and then you've got the bright white. It's just so dramatic. I mean, without yes. introducing any colour at this point, yes, it, yes. the different depth of the of the gray or the white work um it just really sort of illuminates it and makes it look three-dimensional yeah yeah and you could as well if you want if you wanted to put something extra in that little bit there you could add a few little strokes oh. you can just keep adding can't you yeah um, you can see how to the body and yeah you can see how addictive this is i mean parchment craft with the groovy system for me is very addictive yes um, but to have this sort of type of knowledge from yourself i i could easily if i didn't have to go and prep for um the one day special that we're launching tomorrow evening um I, i'd love to just spend a couple of hours just playing yes just to do some wow. different things, you know, you could, you could, I'm really hoping somebody's going to post some different uh, dragonflies. I, I look forward to seeing what people do, you know, um, on, on Facebook. So, I mean, you can yeah. see how different they look. Um, so now you know how to make a, la um, a whole dragonfly. Yeah. And um, you just then reverse the, the embossing for the other side. It's, it, it's not, it's not as difficult when you're, doing a, a, a copy an image on the other side because you can see what you've done across the way so okay and i suppose i suppose at the end of the day linda it, it's a natural um butterflies like flowers roses all that type of thing they're all unique in their own way you'll never get two exactly the same there'll always no. be a slight variation on them wouldn't that's there? right yes that's right so so do you want to go straight into the um are there any more questions with anybody or um, you okay I, with that? That, um I think I love the white work on parchment um let's have a look no I think we're I, I've probably missed some questions because I had my head down <laughs> <laughs> but um I'm sure if I, I see any more pop up then um shall yeah. we do the bubbles then do the what the bubbles. Oh, the bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Right, okay. Here we go then. Right, I wanted to show you how to make these these little bubbles. Oh, right. Okay. You Are you able dog? to hold one of those up a little bit closer, Linda? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, On this one, yeah. they're just, just dots. I didn't make them into bubble bubbles. Right, okay. Um, this one, I made them into bubbles. I'll show you how to do yeah. the bubbles, yeah? So what I used yeah. was um, the dorsal crayons, dorsal colours. So I think, it, I think I'll put a sheet of uh, white paper underneath so that you can see what I'm doing. So we'll need um, a mix mat for this. Right, talking of mix mats, Linda, you was watching um, Barb in the Shack yesterday, wasn't you? Yes, I was. You was. You're always in there. I see you I'm hiding in there, there <laughs> watching. I <will. laughs> So our, our current um, offer of the week is the beautiful Pergolina pencils. And um, so they're half price. 
for a week. It launched yesterday. Now, I'm just going to – let me pop – swap the cameras around so we can go – there we go. So Perga liner pencils, beautiful collection. You've got 36 different pencils in there. So I've got a brand new box. I love the smell of a new box of pencils. Yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> so Barb was showing yesterday how um, she was coloring in with those on the the B pencils, the basic pencils, the oil based ones. And while she was on air, as she always said, oh, Paul, can we do this? Can we do that? So we quickly rustled up this ink blending collection. And basically what you're going to get in there, you've got your two mix mats, which we're about to go to now. And they're exactly the same type of mat just that we've put one label that says water and one label that says oil but there's no difference between them it's just so that you can clearly identify what your medium you're using on them we've also put the spot on sponges which is great for um the dorso oil we put the a pack of the blending nibs a uh, bottle of the dorso oil and then the mapping pen because as you know linda we we run out of the um yes. the handles for the blending pens um but it's the same handle that we use for the mapping pen so barb decided while she was on a yes it right let's put a little bundle together so if you're looking for your essential blending collection jilly's popped the link up for you as well so i just sorry to interrupt you there linda that's but okay I just no just problem to, no to show problem. that I use my blend, blending mat a lot. It's 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 brilliant. Okay, let me swap you back around now. There so I've go. got my blending mat here. Um, I've got the oil one. Okay, so I'm going to be using the Dorso oil, and I'm going to be using my Dorso crayons. Look at that scruffy box. They last wow. for years. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at your box, and let's have a look at my box. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just, look. you can oh, tell who gets it gets more my nice and shiny i, I do use them though i do it's, use them. I've, I've used i've used and used that that's how long they last because i do use them a lot okay so this is where i actually get messy so you'll be very <gasps> proud of me so Eat your heart out, Barbara Gray. I can get messy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this is a the messy. If you said messy to Barbara, I'm sure this is a different type of mess. This is about as messy as I get. Okay, so <laughs> so to do the feathers, let's take a few colours. I'm gonna. I'll do. Um, and can we do colors. this with the? Can we do this with the pencils as well, Linda? Yes, yes, yes. I'll be using the pencils as well. Yeah, yeah. You can okay. do the pencils. I just um. I just think, oh, it's it's nice to use these sometimes. So I'm going to get a little bit of, much like Barb did yesterday. Sometimes you get a torrent that comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be really messy. Now I'm going to rub my dorsal crayon into the oil. The more you rub, right. the, thicker, the thicker the paste it is. So okay. you're going direct into the oil with the crayon? Yes, yes. Isn't that really awful so <laughs> i actually then will clean the oil off my crayon otherwise it gets it gets all over the place um so if you want a pale paste then just don't don't do it a lot but bear in mind when it's a, when it's a warm day it does it does evaporate quickly so yeah and the pink and then I'm going to use my um, blending nibs. I'm going to have one blending nib for each colour. So I've got, and actually, I think I've got all the blending nibs. <laughs> I've got all the that's, handles here, you know. <laughs> that's where they've all gone. Isn't that, isn't that so greedy? <laughs> I've got one that I've already used for the blue. I've got one green. And I think I've got a pink one here. Let's have a clean one for the pink one. Okay, so all you do is it's really, really easy. So on the back of your parchment, is that the front? I can't, I can't think, I can't know, don't know which is the back now or the front. Oh, you could do it on the front, it doesn't matter. But I like to color the bubbles on the back and put some detail on the front. So okay. all you do is, is pick up a nice bit on your nib and just go around in a circular motion. 
to look at a nice bubble shape. So you can do big bubbles, small bubbles. Bubbles are never the same size, are they? So. And so this is Linda getting messy. This is me getting messy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot to it <laughs> i'm not getting any dirty i'm telling you so now then the, the oil starts to evaporate okay so if you okay. go back and just smooth it out a bit the oil will have evaporated and what you do then is you actually push the color to the outside of the bubble thus making it a little bit darker on the outside edge right okay so changing the, the the turn on this slightly if this was a circle and you was doing white work this is where yeah. if you was going round in a circle this is where you'd get the light the the dot in the middle isn't it really yes that's right yeah okay so then we'll do we'll do a couple of green now so it's so that. simple but effective it is. It's lovely. It's lovely to do. Great to do it with the kids. I've done this with my granddaughter. She loved it. Kids love bubbles, don't they? You know? So. They do. And then the pink. Nancy, who's watching all the way from the USA, said yeah. uh, this is this is so not messy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Nancy. This is the best I can do. I suppose the only mess is if you accidentally put your, your sleeve in the in the, in the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I remember when I did I did this on um, the craft store Hochanda years ago. I did this mm. and I got it all up the side of my arm. It was everywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> on air. <laughs> oh dear. So if you want your bubbles a bit darker, just add a more co more colour. So I'm going back now and I'm just smoothing them out a bit. All right, and then just leave them dry, okay? Now then, yep. when they're dry, you take your, I'm going to use now my, my pergoliners, okay? Okay. So I'm going to take uh, a dark blue, um, maybe a, so you can put the A, a pencils here as well. I'm going to take an A pencil as well, just to show you. We can use those and right. a darker green. So now you can either do this on the back or you can do it on the front. So I think I'll do it on the back. And all I'm okay. going to do is I'm going to add a shadow just on one side, just a little bit. And then on the front, I'm going to add a highlight. So pink. So this now is um, an A pencil. Still works. Just It just so, won't blend with the oil. So. Right, OK. So I was just going to ask, it doesn't react to the dorso crayons that you've used no, with the oil then? No. And sometimes that's what you want. So these, the, the blue and the green were the B pencils on the pink wasn't it yeah so when it's dry turn it over and then with your white pencil all you do is just add in a little highlight and maybe some dots gosh oh oh something fell <laughs> <laughs> is that Rob bringing you a cup of tea, Linda? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is my stack of boxes and my craft stuff in. I was moving them this morning, so right, let's get a. Let me bring that closer for you to see. Wow so effective and again just something like that just to add a little bit of dimension to the background yes. like you were showing those finished samples yeah i mean you know how simple is that put them put them in the middle of a in the middle of a heart or around your border around if you, the border. you're stuck and you think well what, what am i going to put in there 
maybe you don't want a solid block of colour, um, or you know, or if you're not that, if you find you can't get your dosing that smooth yet, and you're a beginner. Huh, so what are you saying, Linda? What? <laughs> 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 You're, you're the, the door sinking <laughs> of how not to do it. You've gone, oh, up, in, you've gone up in my estimation. <laughs> <laughs> how, to is, on air, eh? <laughs> how to do it on air, But I mean, that is so effective. And you would think that that was the actual parchment itself. Yes. And then when you can combine it with, the, I'm guessing that's the Indian summer design of paper in the it background is. as yes, well. Right. Yeah. Yes. You can pick up the colours of your paper and uh, use the use the bubbles with the colours of your paper, couldn't you? Or Beautiful. you could do you could do that in the middle of your dragonfly on your dragonfly wings or your butterfly wings. It would be really funky. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. That so, would look beautiful. Yeah. So I love these. I mean, I do a lot of these. I, I've used them for years. And before Barbara brought them out, I was using old bits of things to rub my pencils and my crayons on. But um, I always use them and I use them for my for watercolours and everything, you know. So yeah. um, you can control how much goes onto your parchment by putting it on here first. And am I right in thinking that once that's dried on the mix mat, you can pop that to one side and reactivate it afterwards? That's right. Yes, add a little bit more oil, and and it'll and if you're using the the water watercolor ones, your watercolor pencils, um, yeah. you can add, you can add them to a little bit of water on your mix mat, and they will dry, and then you reactivate the watercolor pencils as well. So it's a way of of saving your pencils, really, um, because you know you you I could you could use them next month, or in two months' time you can reactivate them. You know. Yeah. Wow. So, so don't wipe it off. So don't wipe it off. You're not going to go and clean that now, are you, Lindsay? You're going to leave that. I, I'll do it. I'll, that's the first thing I'll do when we go off air. I'll be scrubbing <laughs> that now in a minute. <laughs> so there we are. Okay. Perfect. That's absolutely beautiful, Linda. What I'll do, I'll, oh, look, look at that. You're, you're quicker than me at switching the camera. I know. Camera. I'm always the this now. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear so we were talking earlier i mean obviously we've got the beautiful pencils that are our offer of the week um half price 15 pound 14.99 yeah. i think they are so it's a good opportunity to stock up because what i love about these pencils is that you've got that beautiful mix of both the wax based and the watercolor as well yes. so yes. i mean maybe sort of in in the months ahead and um, when we maybe have a break from the Pergamano summer school, it, maybe you could show us how you can combine both the wax and the watercolour ones together. I would love to, yes, because um, I think uh, it would be nice for people to see um, the, the traditional side of it, really, the, the, the painting yeah. fine lines and things. We could progress to that. And another thing I really want to show people how to do is the, the penguins. And the birds, uh, yeah. the fluffy bird technique. People are always asking me, where can I see that being done? I think we need to get that done and get it saved somewhere so that they can go back. Yeah, so maybe um, more nearer to Christmas with the, the fluffy penguins, yes, I think, and your yes, beautiful robins as well. Yes, let's do that just before Christmas. And Lovely. We might not have finished the needle tools by then, but we could slot it in somewhere, couldn't we? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Now, tomorrow on the craft store, you were talking about the craft store earlier, Linda. Um, I'm launching a brand new one day special. And we've been looking at your beautiful one, two, three butterflies and dragonflies. And what I'm launching tomorrow, do you remember the cherry green butterflies and moths that yes. we had in stamps? Yes. Well, what we've got on the craft store tomorrow is we've got them now in the groovy version. Okay. Whoa. Now, Beautiful. what we've done, exactly the same with the stamps. You've got the lovely little A6 plate, which gives you the completed image. Then you've got the deconstructed in on a larger plate. So you can take, when you look, you can see here, it's exactly the same designs, but deconstructed. So you've got all these different elements on there. Oh, that's brilliant. And so you don't have to make it up yourself then. You don't have to, com to complete no. the butterfly. You don't have to fiddle about, do you? 
Absolutely. And you're yeah. also going to get the layout and the colouring guide as well with each of the Lovely. plates. Oh, it's nothing now, to it, They're absolutely gorgeous. And it's going to come with both of them. And what I love, Lucy, very clever Lucy, is I, I worked this out yesterday. If I put the groovy plate over the coloured image, it's yeah. exactly the same size. Yeah, wow. So okay. I'm going to show tomorrow during the six o'clock show how you can reconstruct the deconstructed one to have a large version and a smaller version. Lovely. Okay. Lovely so we've got so we've got all the beautiful designs. So we've got this one. Whoops, turn it over. So we've got this one here in both sizes. Again, deconstructed as well. I mean, look, butterflies, moths, fuchsias. Let's turn that over again got this all around so again you've got the two different sizes you've got the elements i love this one the beautiful rose again i mean look, you see those, all those these... colors that you've got there that where the colors mingle you can do that you see with the pergolinas you just need to know how to do it yeah absolutely yeah. look and if you struggle with your bubbles <laughs> You got bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got all of this and then you've got two plates of all different butterflies and moths with and again what you've been showing us with that beautiful shaded work we can replicate on all of these different butterflies yeah we could go to town on those Oh. Absolutely. So, yep. So these launch tomorrow. Um, I have to say thank you to Josie. Josie's prepped all my demos for me. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic. It's it's all about the teamwork. It really is. Yes. And um, so, what else have I got on my list? So we've got the one day special. We've covered that. Um, let me swap over so I can talk to you. Um, the Pergamano Summer School. So don't forget to check out our website. Linda's going to have a break next week because she's going to get ready for school. So I thought next week, what we'll do, the beautiful, your beautiful one, two, three butterfly plates, Linda. I thought what we'll do, we'll do a little project next week. And people at home can then sort of decide whether they want to do the shaded work, whether they want to do some colour. But I thought because you've got so much to get ready for and um, that you have a week off before school starts and then you'll be yeah. raring to go with everybody on the half 20th of July. Half, half term before it started. <laughs> Pre-half term. Pre-half term. Okay. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so again, a big thank you to Linda. Um, I think I've got, I think so we've got the one day special, the Pergamano summer school, the offer of the week, take advantage of that. And that little blending bundle where you've got, I mean, those mix mats, as Linda said, they're invaluable. Um, just to keep you going. So what have you got planned for the rest of the day, Linda? Um, well, I've got, um, I've got a groovy club project to complete. So I'm gonna, gonna finish that today. And I've got, I've got some plates to design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder what they are. We can't well, talk about that. Not, not no. while we're live, Linda. No, secret no. stuff. <laughs> secret <stuff. laughs> so again once again as always a massive thank you to linda um i mean i've learned so much and i've been doing groovy since it began now but it's beautiful to have someone with your skill and your teaching ability to be able to break it down and really because even sort of like at workshops and retreats to have this type of one-to-one -one, for me is priceless and um, it's it just a massive thank you for, for everything you're doing, Linda, and, and especially the school. I'm so excited about starting. I, who'd have thought people would be start excited about starting school? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your company, Paul, and thank you to everybody that's, uh, that's come along the journey with us. And Oh, I, I really hope that lots of you will, will be enthusiastic about the needle tools. I hope so, anyway. I, I think so. they have. I mean, I, the the books that we're sending out at the moment in the post to everybody um yeah we've got there's it's just as well it is a virtual classroom because i don't think the room would be big enough to hold <laughs> the amount of people that will be joining us in school on the 20th of july so okay so oh i can hear the helicopter going off they're obviously looking for me so, All right. <laughs> um, so on that note uh, we'll say goodbye and um Linda will be back in two weeks' time, ready for school. I'll be back with you next Tuesday. Barb's in the shack tomorrow, as usual, at 10 o'clock with those beautiful trees 
and um, yeah. book covers. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. And then I'll see everybody tomorrow night at six o'clock on the craft store. Okay. So, Good luck um, with the show tomorrow. That'll be a love. Thank you, Linda. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye. See, Bye. see you all next week, everybody. Bye-bye.